With this nice weather we've been having, we decided to get our train out and our garden railway and also give you a few pointers on ground covers that might fit into unusual places around your landscape. We have some here that are different dwarf ground covers that we have in a shady area, and then we're going to show you some that grow in full sun. And starting off, this is a dwarf ajuga, and it will grow in sun or shade. And we have one over in our little town area to show you that really has great color right now. Right here we have a dwarf hosta, and we want to remind you that as, as hostas are coming up right now, it's a great time to feed them, make sure that they get good foliage growth this year. And these are doing very well, have a, little, a few rocks around them as an accent piece. And then on over here we have a dwarf boxwood called green velvet, and it's never going to get too much larger than that, and it's the perfect scale for a small landscape like this. And then on around we have some dwarf bamboo. Now these are buried in the ground in containers to help keep them in place because they do eventually spread by stolons and rhizomes and so we want to make sure that those stay in bounds. But dwarf bamboo does great in a shady area. And on over here we have a dwarf mondo grass and it's got a little bit of winter kill. It's too small to go over with a weed eater and cut back, but that will eventually be overgrown by new foliage, and I think will look really fine around our water garden as we get it ready for spring. Then down here by our little man who fell off the train, we've got some dianthus that are just about ready to bloom, and I think they add a nice blue-green accent to the landscape. The foliage is attractive enough as it is, but also once those flowers come out, it'll really look nice. Of course, sedums always come to mind when you need to fill in in a small space, and this one has a nice short nubby form to it. It's really going to look great once it fills in around these rocks. And then up ahead is one plant you may not be familiar with. This is called Sagina or Irish Moss, and it has a very nice velvety texture. It'll be perfect for a real small area. It will thrive in either full sun or semi-shade, and I've seen this used a lot around water gardens to give you sort of a carpeted, velvet, velvety appearance. And on ahead here we have Potentilla. This is uh, a cinca foil that has a nice golden yellow appearance that you very often don't find in ground covers that will retain flowers throughout most of the season. It's very, very attractive. And then as a nice contrast to it over here, we have some violas or Johnny Jump Ups. And these will very readily continue to spread and they'll volunteer in the garden and come up in various colors. And that's very attractive in the landscape, especially next to the yellow cinca foil. And then back here, if you'd rather go with pastel shades, this is sea pink or armeria. Some people also call it thrift, and it's just now blooming. And these flowers, of course, you can easily pick off and disbud to keep it neat looking if you have this in a pot in a small alpine garden or in a small rock garden near your patio. The nice thing about it is it has a nice evergreen, cushiony type foliage. It's very, very attractive. Well, with this pink elf dwarf ajuga, it looks like this little town's getting ready for a regular ajuga festival. Look how it's covered with just lilac pink blossoms, and it looks like a large rhododendron shrub next to this miniature boxwood. It's really a nice effect next to these buildings. Well, on over here, we have some dwarf iris that is another thing you could put into a rock garden. Stays small, has a nice light yellow color for spring. And then on over here, we have California ice plant. And it was winter hardy this year. We want to emphasize that all these plants in the rock garden have made it through one of the hardest winters that we've had in a long time. They all made it through just fine. Of course, the key was to provide moisture when needed, but a lot of these are succulents, and so they did okay. Now, here are some more sedums right here out in front, two different forms. And we want to emphasize that when you go to a nursery to pick out ground covers for a rock garden or an alpine garden, there are many, many cultivars available. And so check with your nurseryman to see what their ultimate size will be so that it will fit your area. We hope you've enjoyed this classic from the Oklahoma Gardening Vault. Remember, even though these tips and techniques are timeless, there's always something new to learn in the world of gardening. By subscribing to both Oklahoma Gardening and OK Gardening Classics, you'll have access to a wealth of gardening knowledge, both classic and contemporary.